Welcome to Socials with the Saints, Pilgrim Center of Hope's companion podcast to our video series of the same name. Are you looking for hope and inspiration? Grab a cup of tea or your favorite beverage and spend some time with us as we meet role models throughout church history and discuss how they can help us in our daily pilgrimage of life. Hello, and thank you for joining us. Welcome to Socials with the Saints. My name is Jason Nunez, and I'm Pilgrim Center of Hope's media production assistant. Hi, everyone. I'm Nan Balfour, events coordinator for Pilgrim Center of Hope. If you haven't yet watched the video presentation for this month so that you can enjoy and meet St. Andrew Marici, we invite you to do so at pilgrimcenterofhope.org slash socials, which is where our Socials with the Saints archive is located. You can also find these videos on Pilgrim Center of Hope's Facebook and YouTube channels. Links are in the description of this podcast. Yes, yeah, so please look out for those. Socials with the Saints started as a monthly afternoon tea event here at Pilgrim Center of Hope in 2010. Fast forward in 2020, uh, we actually continued Socials with the Saints as a, me- as a multimedia series. And we're excited to bring you this companion podcast, which is like the discussion that we would normally enjoy at Socials with the Saints after hearing about the Saints and their life. Exciting news, thanks be to God, we are once again meeting in person here at Pilgrim Center of Hope to meet, pray, and discuss the lives of the saint featured in this month's episode. We certainly invite you to give our Facebook page a like and stay up to date with all things Pilgrim Center of Hope, including those in-person events. This month, we learn more about the amazing life of St. Angela Marici, patron saint of sick of the sick, disabled, and physically challenged people, and those grieving the loss of parents. So let's get into it, man. Yes, that's true. <laughs> so um, I'm excited here uh, that you're joining me once again on this podcast. I know that you have taken a deep dive into the life of St. Angela Marici. So please share with us, how did this come to be? Well, I should have known of St. Angela Marici many years before now. <laughs> she is the foundress of the Ursulines. And from 1974 to 1978, I attended Ursuline Academy here in San Antonio, Texas, and never heard of her. Wow. Um, until <laughs> recently, her name came up. Uh, there was a novena from the Ursulines. And I was like, who is this? So I started reading about her, and uh, we've talked about this before on the podcast, that we as a staff at Pilgrim's of Hope pick a saint each year yes. to get know, to know more about them and to ask for their assistance in our professional and personal life. So I picked her. So last year, um, 2021, was my uh, journey with St. Angela Marici. So yes, I've done a deep dive with her and um, really, really... Um, privileged and honored and happy to now say that she's one of my friends in heaven. Friends in heaven. I really love how you put that there. That's um, because that's exactly what it is, right? These saints, the community of saints, they are our friends in heaven. And we, we really should, you know, get, get to know these extraordinary people and these souls. So what was one aspect of her life that really surprised you after taking that deep dive? So a lot of times when we when we go back and we when we think about history, we think that we know we heard the stories and they're true that women were considered property. Um, they either had to be married or they were sent to a nunnery. Um, but other than that, they really had no say in the world. Well, Saint Andrew Marici completely defies all those stereotypes. Uh, she was came from a Catholic family and she, they had they were of means. Um, when she became an adult. She and her parents had died, and she she went and took over their, their management of their property. I mean, she was in charge. From there, um, she did join a the, called the Order of St. Francis, um, and they called, her sis, they called her Sister Angela, but she was out in the world. Mm-hmm. So she would go around. Brescia was a province in Italy that she, belonged, that she lived in, and she would go around doing her regular job, and she'd also do Christian instruction. And, you know, I have to say, um, I'm, I'm going to get on my pulpit here a little bit, but um, I really, they, I, we really should have been taught about her in high school because that was a time when the women's move, liberation movement, you know, Roe versus Wade right. just came out in 1974, I'm um, 73, and we went to, so there was a whole, like, women were in your face, you know, the ERA um, amendment. To know that there is this woman who was her own woman back in the 1500s, and she was our foundress. 
it could have made a huge difference. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I left the church for about 20 years of my life. Had I, I, and I don't know that if had I known about St. Angel Marici, I would have not, but it certainly would have helped. It certainly would have helped to know that um, there was this Catholic innovator and leader at her time, and she was her own woman. She did not take guff from anybody, not even the Pope. Right. Right, and that's so kind of so in the spirit of what you're saying there, and you, you mention and you, you say it, you know, she was our founder. You know, with knowing about her life early on, you probably would have, you know, taken that school spirit to another level. Yes, yes. We would have gone out there as the leaders, as Catholic women. And, you know, um, it's a pity, but a lot of the women I know who I went to school with, they're no longer practicing their faith. No, I, you know, again, I can't go it all back to their high school years. Right. But it didn't help. And I just wonder why we didn't know about her. And, you know, the Ursuline Academy is not here with us anymore. And I don't know what happened to the sisters. Um, I know it's still, there's Ursulines in Ohio. That's a great group of women. And also in New Orleans, there's still a school there. But I just wonder, because I remember um, a lot of the sisters left the, pre, the sisterhood um, at, in San Antonio. So um, I don't know, but I'm just so and I wonder if now that she came back to my attention. So she's like, Nan, you go out there and you defend me. <laughs> there you go. Because <laughs> they're still out there and there's and there's no time like the present to um, take over your life and be the woman that God created you to be. So let me ask you, Jason, yes. you've, you've heard her live. You, 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 um, I did the recording for the um, video for, for St. Angel Marici. What do, you, what do you think about her? Right. And before I get to your question, I'm just going to throw a plug in there. Folks, I know we mentioned it, but please, if you have not seen the video presentation yet, I'm inviting you and asking you, please, to just pause now. And then uh, once, once you're done, after, after you watch the video presentation, come back to this point of the podcast so we can get back into it. So if you just did that, welcome back to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank good thank to have you, you so much. Yes, <laughs> yes indeed. So St. Angela Mitchell really, really struck me a couple different ways. Uh, for me, one aspect, especially just kind of standing behind the camera and listening to you go through this presentation, at the age of ten, you know, she 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 was orphaned, right? Right. Uh, her sister had passed away. Yet at ten years old, you know, for me, thinking someone who's 10 years old, they're sad because their sibling passed away, right? Right. She was concerned about her soul at that young age, right? So to me, that's that's another level of, of, of even love. That's an eternal love for your sibling to where someone at 10 years old, I don't know if I had that capacity then to really go to that next level of things there. Um, you know, she was concerned about her soul. You know, and you'll you'll hear in the presentation of of uh, a vision that Saint Angela Marici had, and um, that to me is a blessing. Yes. You know, for for someone who, well, I, I'm comfortable in saying that uh, that I've had a vision of myself. Uh, it was of it was of my brother who has passed, but the vision was not about he was still alive when this happened, and uh, I was actually I was. I was uh, I was helping my church organize a retreat for men, and I was thinking and discerning whether I should invite him or not. He was the only member of our uh, him and my father were the only males in our immediate family who had not yet gone on these retreats. My other brother had, and I had. My sister and mother had as well. And um, I was sitting in adoration, and I was really I was really thinking if I should invite them. You figure why not, right? But. Um, you know, I had some hesitation. I, I couldn't explain it. I didn't know why. And so walking into that adoration chapel, that was the thought I had. And just being there, I was blessed with the vision of seeing not only my brother, but my father in the room with these men. Mm. And thanks be to God, that vision became a reality for me. Right. And so I, I can understand, you know, what St. Angela Ricci may have felt with this vision and this gift from God. And it is a gift from God. Yes. Uh, he does want to speak to us, and he wants to come into the situations that we have. We can only uh, um, imagine her grief at the time, and especially wondering, where is her sister? She's right. a young lady. And she does exactly what we're supposed to do in those times. She went directly to God, and she asked him. So we should just, should just praise God that he, he comes into our life. Visions don't have to be apparitions <laughs> about how to change the church. It could just be a situation in your life. And St. Andrew Marici witnesses to the beauty of that. Yes, indeed. 
Yes, indeed. And for all of us, kind of to what you mentioned there, it may not be a vision, but it may just be a feeling that we right. have in our heart and our soul. Or an understanding soul. that all yes. of a sudden I didn't get it and now I get it. Yes. And that's the Holy Spirit. That's how he works. The Holy Spirit turns on those light bulbs for us. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Yes, indeed. So a little bit later in her story, we hear that... Um, she had a vision about founding an order. Um, it was going to take many decades of her life before that happened, but she went about the work of trying to find out exactly what the Lord was calling to her with that. And one of the things they, they talked about that during that time, people would go on pilgrimage to the Holy Land, and they went to do penance, to um, atone for their own sins, but also to find clarity in what God was teaching them. So Angela decided she was going on a Holy Land pilgrimage, and something very strange happens to her. So she went for clarity, and um, she struck blind. Right. So what did you think when you heard that? <laughs> Gosh. So uh, what we'll do is, in the show description, we're going to put a link to an episode of Journeys of Hope, mm -hmm. which is another podcast that Pilgrim Center Hope is proud to bring you. Uh, and so this is an episode that Mary Jane Fox and, and Yunnan yes. uh, both... Um, co-hosted and it's about saint angela marici and you to get into more of this pilgrimage so um so it's an added gem for our listeners to go ahead and uh to go ahead and listen to and learn more about her life but as far as your, your question there you know lost your vision yes gosh to me it's it's uh it's almost like like the other senses is what she needed to kind of fully Fully get what she needed to get out of this ex this whole experience, mm -hmm. not just the pilgrimage, but this whole experience overall. And uh, her vision did come back. It did. So it's almost for this period of time. Just for the Holy Land pilgrimage. Just her, for the Holy Land her pilgrimage. Blindness. She had blindness. Right. Right. So to me, it's almost like that. Who knows? Right. I can't say. You know, if the vision would have clouded her decision making for the clarity she's looking for, but for me, it's almost like the other senses you know, came into play more here for her. And that's what Angela said. She said she in no way despaired. Um, she in no way complained about it. She's just said, well, and she, and she talks about when she's at these holy sites, she experienced them in her soul as if she was seeing them. Um, and just that right there inspires you when you, when you sing things happen and you're like, why did God let this happen? Yes. Why is God? And, the the answer is always because he wants to teach us something. <laughs> yes. Always. Without a doubt. So instead of why, it should be what are you trying to teach me here, Lord? Indeed, indeed. That's it's that different lens that mm -hmm. we look through things and and go through things. It's that it's like door A door or door A door B, right? Almost like those game shows, right? What's behind door number one? What's behind door number two? Door number one can be why God. Door number two can be what am I supposed to be learning here? Yes. And. Uh, Sometimes it's the road, often less traveled, but it's, it's what can really bring that fruit. Right, right, right. And then we also learned when she came back, um, she was on ship coming back, and they had a storm, and she prayed, and many said it was a miraculous rescue that they were able to return. She became very famous um, at that time, and so she was in Venice, and uh, the Council of Venice, which I'm assuming is like, you know, the governing body, found out about her and were trying to get her to stay there in Venice. Um, and then also from there, and she didn't because she knew that she she just knew that this company she's supposed to be founding of women. She knew very little about it, except mm. she knew it needed to be in Brescia. And it never really explains in anything I learned about her why that was the case. But she was... That's where it's supposed to be. So that she even from there went to see the Pope. Right. Because he had heard about her. He also tried to get her to stay in Rome. And she said, no, <laughs> I have to go back to Brescia. And again, I just go back to that, her leadership. Like she knew what God was asking of her, even though she didn't know what God was asking of her. So just that faith to defy and um, I think a lot of times, I mean, I don't know with me, Jason, I'll let you talk here in a second. But with me, it's like I question everything. I question everything. <laughs> like, because you always hear from someone, oh, maybe that's what he meant. Well, maybe I'm supposed to do that. But if you have a prayer life and you have this faith like St. Angela had, what a confidence it gives you to just 
stay the course, even though you don't know what the course is. <laughs> Faith. Faith. Faith, staying the course without knowing what the course is. Wow. And that's, so not only does, is Angela displaying the confidence she has, but she's displaying the confidence in her faith. Yes. Right? And just kind of, you know, what you're saying here, St. Angela told the Pope no. Okay. Oh, she's, no. she's a woman. Yeah. Back in that time. Yeah. And she had the, what's the word to use here? Fortitude. Yes. Right? To say no to the Pope. You know, some folks have this vision of meeting a Pope and he, you know, he kisses a baby and he kisses his ring and, you know, all this stuff. But Angela said no. And to kind of put a nice bow on that story that you shared there, by all means, watch the video. But for those who are curious, the Pope approved her plan in principle, right? Right. So not only was he kind of obedient to her, but he, he himself had faith to say, okay, let's see where you're going with this. Right. Yes. Right. Let's see where you're going here with this. So, gosh. That's amazing here. And you know, Jason, if you if you look further into her life, it was going to be another decade from, from her meeting with the Pope. It was another decade and before her the order of, it's called the Company of St. Ursula, it became known as the Ursulines, mm -hmm. was actually established. Again, you know, you talked about fortitude. I think what really impressed me about St. Angela, what she has truly taught me, is even if you um, know that God is calling you to a certain ministry or a certain mission or whatever it is, what's more important to him is your soul with him in heaven. So, and I think she got that. I think she got that. I don't, it, I don't know how long this is going to take, Lord. Is it going to take two years? Is it going to take 25 years? You know, I don't know. But you're doing work in me. And I think she really um, understood that. And I think a lot of times we, you know, especially as Americans, I know it's an American culture thing. It's what we do. It's what we accomplish. It's what our successes are. But if we knew that the ultimate success for God is for us to be with him in heaven, then that should become our goal as well. And the fruit of that is the fruit of that. Yes. Yes. And it's the fruit of that is what can be left for others as well. It's just like us learning about her life. Yes. Her, her life is still bearing fruit. It is. Still, these many, 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 many more times years later, it's still bearing fruit. Right, right. So she stayed in faith. And um, so, you know, piggybacking on that, there was two times where she kind of had, a, they talked about that she had an unofficial association of women. Like first it was, uh, when she was going around, she was still living in Brescia and, um, she was managing the property, and she was also doing her Christian instruction. And these women, it says, of some leisure. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what that meant, but they had some time on their hands is what it meant. <laughs> uh, they, they saw her, and she was an uh, inspiration to them. So they said, well, we want to join you. And she said, well, come on. And she let them join her, but it was never really a structure. She always talked about that she knew she wanted to have a core group of women who shared her ideals, who were as fervent as she was. But these women joined and they left or they came, they did what they could and they went on and she just let it go. There was another group um, because of the, the wars that were going on there. So in her time period, it was in Italy, 15, 16, you've heard of the, you know, all the warring families. It was usually uh, fiefdoms against fiefdoms back then. So she would uh, harbor peace between them. There's also plagues going on during that time. Um, so what was the result is there was a lot of widows and there's another group of women who said well we are now widows we don't have to take care of family and husbands we want to help you and she was like well come on <laughs> and again that was not the company of saint ursula that was not to be the religious order these were all just things that she, were along the way and you could see where we could get frustrated if she didn't get this core group of women and she's thinking, well, I don't know, maybe I didn't understand what God was saying, or maybe this was supposed to be it and I failed and it didn't work. And her life just never shows that she ever thought that, that wow. she just was always, what was important to her was doing God's will. And she says at some point when she was, when she's establishing her role, that number one was God below that, the church, Below that, priests. Below that, family. Below that, the laws. Below that, um, 
regular people. So God was always number one. And I think that that's what her life shows, that God was always number one with her. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that order, because I know that's something that even me, myself, I'm you know, curious about just kind of learning about her life and reading about her life, knowing that she that she devoted time, right, real time to writing the rule, you mm -hmm. know, to writing this order. It, it's good to know what it is. It's almost like the Benedictines, right? What is it? Ora e labora, right? right? Pray and work. So it's um. some people, those those rules make perfect sense to them. And it's just that's this is how I want to live my life. I'd venture to say that who wouldn't want to live their life with God number one, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Wow, Nan. Well, this this is fun, fun, fun stuff. We have a lot more to come uh, for us to take a, to take a even more look at the life of Saint Angela Marici. But for now, we're going to take a short break so we can ask you just to stay with us as we continue our conversation. Thanks for taking a break with us at the Saints. We invite you to help spread the word about socials with the Saints. How you ask? Well, it's simple. Step one. Invite your friends to find the video presentation on Pilgrim Center of Hope's YouTube channel, Facebook page, or on our website, pilgrimcenterofhope.org. While you're at it, follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Step two is this companion podcast. Find Socials with the Saints podcast on our website or on apps like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Amazon Music. If you listen using an app, please take a few seconds to give the podcast a positive rating. Your simple action will signal the app that Socials with the Saints should be recommended to people who are browsing for a new podcast to listen to. As we say at Pilgrim Center, I hope every little bit helps. Thank you very much for assisting us in spreading the word about Socials with the Saints. Now, let's dive back into the discussion. Welcome back. After meeting St. Angela Marici, Nan, I'm curious, how does her life inspire you to live your daily life? Well, to see that a woman way back in the 15th and 16th century was an innovator, uh, and what Angela Marici is known for as being an innovator, she was the first woman to establish a religious order of sisters that lived outside the cloister. Mm. Now, for anyone who doesn't know what a cloister is, and they, they are still cloisters, um, there's cloisters here in San Antonio. They're women, um, sis, you know, religious sisters, who live in a convent. They don't ever go out into the world. Their job is to pray for the world and the church, to sacrifice, to fast. Um, it's a great uh sacrifice for women because they're giving up marriage they're giving up children um, it's a noble and worthy way to be a religious sister but saint angela must have seen that that was not what she was called to and i'm wondering if that was part of the defying the council of venice and defying the pope was she saw that the Lord was asking her for something new. And I think they said that in her vision, that it was a new um, group of women. They, she saw this ladder coming down from heaven um, where maidens were coming down, singing, and angels were there with their instruments. And she heard a voice telling her that she was being called to form this new order of women. And I, I suppose over time she realized that it's to be out in the world. And it's because that's who she was. She was a woman out in the world. And so I guess the lesson that I'm learning is look at who I am. Look at where I am. Um, I'm not called to be a missionary over in foreign countries because I don't live over in foreign countries. <laughs> right. I live here. So there's something for me here because the Lord has placed me here. So, and he wants us to be creative. He wants us to be innovative. He wants us to wonder um, I think we're way more limited than God is. God's got the big picture, and he's like, come on, tell me. What do you want? What do you want? Yep. I want to give you the grace for it. What do you think? And that's where prayer life comes in. That's where conversation with God comes in. That's where, um, you know, I, I do a daily adoration. Um, I do it for people who don't do it. <laughs> wow. Um, but I do it also, and I, 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 I could not imagine not having my daily hour of adoration. It's a non-negotiable for me mass and daily adoration and it's just a time where sometimes i'm doing all the talking and sometimes i'll say lord you talk and through that i have i i do believe that 
I am doing things outside my normal comfort zone. You can attest to that, Jason, yes. doing that video. It's yes. not something I'm used to. But I do think he was telling me, Nan, you know, people need to know about St. Andrew Marici. And I picked you to tell them. So just simple things like that. It doesn't mean starting a religious order. It just means looking in your little circle and sphere of influence and where am I supposed to go out and what am I supposed to do? And that's, you know, St. Andrew Marici is, she's inspired me to, to be more present to God and be more present to the world around me. Thanks be to God and thanks be to God you're open yes. to, you know, doing that. And you just must say you definitely did a wonderful job with Thank the video <laughs> stepping in front of the camera. It's going outside those comfort zones. They're, they're scary. Right. That's, that's, you know, sometimes we see those opportunities to grow in that way. And for someone who may be listening, maybe thinking, gosh, how can I do that? Maybe something as sim simple as, you know, sharing her life, right? right? You know, something that you picked up from this podcast or one of our other episodes. Right. That could be a way of just planting a seed in your in your loved ones or a perfect stranger, you know, and let, let that seed grow into something beautiful. Right. And I'm thinking, you know, if, if you're, if you watch her and you, She's an inspiration where you can tell, like, if you have a daughter or you have a niece or you have someone who's like, I don't know what to do with my life. I don't know what, you know, God's say, well, let me tell you about this lady that lived in the 15th century. Right. Just tell her story. Right. And that can inspire people. How yes, about you, indeed. Jason? What do you, what, how she helped you? Well, to me, you know, really what struck me and, you know, for those who have listened to the podcast in the past, you know, this is not, not a strange thing for me to say, but, uh, I really see a lot of St. Angela being intentional in her life. Yeah, and that's that's something that's really big for me. Um, I struggle with it kind of just like anyone when they see something that they really want to latch onto, they do and they don't, they do and they don't. And I, you know, I'm definitely not, not any different. But uh, one of the main examples that struck, that stuck with me was um, as far as uh, St. Angela when she was 20 years old, right? You know, uh, Whenever she was home or she was traveling, she would wear this wool garment, yeah. you know, as as the Franciscans did. And then it's wool, right? So it's rough, yeah. right? It's not very comfortable. And personally speaking, comfort is one of the things that I kind of keep close to me and I kind of want, <laughs> you know, to move outside of that and have this, you know, th that's intentional. She's She's seeing this path in her life. She wants to be close to it. Uh, Franciscans wear this, so she does too, right? Right. And she also had a white veil on her head also, which is um, mass, you know, there's women that do veil. You know, definitely it's, it's when you understand the reason behind it, um, you understand how beautiful it is. It's not to attract attention to them. Quite on the contrary, it's total opposite of that and very, very beautiful meaning behind that. And um, St. Angela was intentional. Yes, he was. And to me, that's... I'm seeing a commonality among these saints there that they're intentional. So it's, I think God keeps putting that in my brain there to say, see, see, I'm showing you another example here, Jason. So, and there's a little side story when she was in the, in the Holy land, um, it was a very dangerous time in the Holy land. Um, they would caution pilgrims, do not go out by yourself. Mm. You will more than likely be killed. Oh, wow. And they said that she probably didn't go out by herself, but she wore that Franciscan habit. And there was one understanding. I think it was the Saracens were in charge at the time, um, but they respected the Franciscans. Oh. So she had a little bit more um, freedom to go around because she was wearing the habit. So it's just kind of like, you know, I don't know who knows what God's thinking, but it's like, you're doing this for me, Angela. I'm going to do this for you. So she got to go into more places than the other ones did because she was wearing the Franciscan habit. Wow. And I'm sure she caught on to that. I'm <laughs> she sure was a she smart did. lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. And I'm um, also, uh, so I found it so interesting that she died six years after the order was founded. So 40 years of her life was all in preparation. It happened and she died. And that just to me attested to what I had mentioned earlier, that she knew that it was not about her starting this order. It was about her just following the course that the Lord had for her and he would produce the fruit through her. But what's so interesting is after she passed away, it's just like the Ursulines took off. 
she kept saying it's supposed to be in Brescia, and it, that was found in Brescia, just like she wanted. But from there, it went from Milan, it went to the other Italian cities, it went to France, it went to England, it went to Japan, it went to the United States. Now they're in over 36 countries. Um, one very interesting story, because I'm from New Orleans, and I know about the Ursuline um, School there. It's still there, still very active. In fact, I think they built a whole new campus recently. In 1727, they opened it, and they said... Every woman who wants to come can come. So they had discrimination against French Creoles back then, against Indians, against African Americans, of course, or Africans. They weren't even considered Americans. They were just property. Um, whether slaves or not slaved. Wow. So if plantation mistresses wanted to go to their school or send their school children, the Ursulines said, oh, by all means, but your slaves are coming too. And they did. Wow. And these these plantation mistresses formed a group called the Children of Mary, and they pledged to catechize their slaves. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, and there's one woman who just followed the path, knowing that God meant for her, and then look what happened. It's like, I'm sure, and they say, they, they mentioned in this, this article that I was reading about it, that there's racism in New Orleans, as there's racism everywhere, but it wasn't to the extent as other places. Because there was just this under, underlying, um, and this is the beauty of the Catholic Church, this underlying knowledge that we're all precious in the eyes of God. We all have dignity. So, just, it, right. blossomed it blossomed is what it did. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful, man. So, you know, one of the great things about these socials with the saints is that not only does it include the video presentation and this podcast, but we also have some downloads for you to print, use, and share. We have a pamphlet about St. Angel Marici, and we ask you to, to, to download it, print it, share it with friends and family, as well as saint cards with re related quotes. And we have a, and a picture with a quote from St. Angel Marici to program as the lock screen image on your cell phone. What a great way to be reminded of this wonderful role model of faith throughout your day. Yes, indeed. And for me, that's one step where you can be intentional about your faith. Yes. <laughs> Programming that as a lock screen on your cell phone. <laughs> you can change it every month, depending on the saint that we're talking about. Yes, 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 indeed you can. And I might add that that, that picture, it also makes a pretty good uh, computer wallpaper. It's just going to be the center of your screen there, right? right? But it leaves plenty of space for all the icons we have on our desktops. So <laughs> Awesome. So we have some quotes from St. Anne Marici that we talked about. Jason, what is your favorite quote? Quotes. I love quotes. I love saying quotes even more, Nan. And for me, the one that really stuck out to me is strive to be faithful to that which God has called you. Mm -hmm. And gosh, have we not, has that not been one of the main points mm -hmm. of this episode mm -hmm. here, right? Is just those words from St. Angela um, Marici there is strive to be faithful to which God has called you. And if I can just not add to the quote, but just reinforce the spirit of this podcast and this this episode in, um, specifically here is we we can't put a timeline, right? right. We, we can't put a timeline on God and say, God, I really want this. If you're calling me to do this within two years. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and unfortunately, you know, if you're not aware, breaking news, God exists outside of time. Right. So, right. you know, time is something you know, that's, it's, we use as humans, right? So be faithful, be faithful and have patience. Right. And How about you? What's your favorite quote? I'm just going to piggyback on that. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt to remind him though. Cause I've done oh. that before. <laughs> it's like, just check in. Yeah. It's like, Lord, you know, I have a deadline. It's tomorrow, but your will be done. But, and he always comes through. I've already My... accepted the, <laughs> the Outlook invite for the recording tomorrow. So. <laughs> <laughs> so mine is, and there was there were many of hers that I really loved, and I think I just told you to choose for the Saint card because I couldn't I couldn't um, piggyback. I mean, I couldn't like, get down to the like one or two. But the one that I, I looked at today, and I thought that this kind of um, encapsulates what I've been talking about with Saint Andrew Marici. The quote is: "Beware of trying to accomplish anything by force." And it, it's kind of like yours, but it's also when you know, you know, you know something is from God. And you can get so frustrated and you can even get mad at him because like, Lord, you told me to do this. Why is it not happening? Again, you know, outside of time. But she is a perfect example. 
40 years from vision to um, establishment of her order. And she was like, on your time, Lord, on your time, Lord, as you want, Lord, where am I going now, Lord? And that's something I'm trying to be intentional about. Like every day I'll say, okay, Lord, this is my day. This is what I have planned, but whatever you say. And just, it has helped when things just kind of move differently than you thought they were. He's, he knows what he's doing. He's ordered everything and everything gets done. Everything gets done anyway. That's, that's one of those amazing things where whenever you're organizing something and gosh, I'll even say retreat for parishes. Sometimes at the end of it, you're like, I don't know how we got all this done, but it <laughs> happened, right? It's yeah. all by the grace of God and the Holy Spirit right there. Uh, so when I think of your quote, and I just kind of want to add here, when I, when, I, when I first read the quote, I I understood it as by force, as in almost like you're making someone do something, right? Or yeah. you're you're overriding and you're doing, right? But I, I thought of it as one person to another or one person to something else. And some clarity that I'm getting here is just from considering our conversation, uh, there's a, a phrase, right? You're forcing it. As in you may be speaking with someone about something and they really want their idea and they're they're gonna right. they're gonna force their idea, but the other person is like, well you're forcing that, mm-hmm. you know? And now when I hear these words, you're forcing it comes to mind. Yeah. And essentially is not to force it. Right? Yes, right. But uh, a different a different way to think about it compared to one person forcing one person to do another, it's more of a person kind of like imposing their will, their right. own individual will on what they're doing compared to staying open to God's will. Right. And even if it is God's will, if you're forcing it and it's not, it's not producing what it, sh- what you think it should be producing, it could be that God wants something else produced right. or it could be that all of a sudden your will Right, he, you're running in front of him. Right. So, and it's the same idea yep. with another person, with your children, with whatever. You right. know what's best for them, but don't force it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. It's that, that. There you go. Don't force it. Definitely. Mm-hmm. As we do begin to bring our time together to a close, uh, we'd like to share with everyone listening this special prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. St. Angela Marici. You were generous and joyful in answering God's call, and you happily shared the gifts you had been given. When you recognized the need for education, you overcame obstacles and prejudices by your prayer and your commitment to those living in poverty. Open our eyes to the needs of others. Remind us that Jesus calls us to serve our sisters and brothers and to bring joy to those around us. Amen. Amen. In the Father, Son, and Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, Jason, we've come to the end of our conversation, and we'd like to continue it with you listening today. What struck you the most about St. Angela Marici? Please leave a comment on the YouTube video or Facebook post that corresponds to this episode, or you can send us an email at ministry at pilgrimcenterofhope.org. We look forward to seeing what you have to say, and maybe you'll hear your name on next month's episode. Yes, indeed. Uh, We definitely want to thank you for joining us on Socials with the Saints. We invite you to come visit Pilgrim Center Hope and learn more about our threefold ministry of pilgrimages, conferences, and outreach. Visit pilgrimcenterofhope.org. That's pilgrimcenterofhope.org. Or give us a call at 210-521-3377. That's 210-521-3377. Join us next month as we learn about St. Valentine, pretty timely for February. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yes, indeed. Uh, as, as mentioned at, at the beginning of our time together, we are continuing with our in-person Socials with the Saints events here at Pilgrim Center of Hope. Please make sure that you like our Facebook page so that way you can stay up to date with details of these wonderful events. On behalf of Pilgrim Center of Hope, we definitely want to thank you for tuning in. We are so grateful to this month's sponsor, Mary Jo Quinn. Thank you so much, Mary Jo. She made this podcast episode possible. We thank you so much. If you also would like to join us as a missionary of hope and be a part of Pilgrim Center of Hope's Mission of Hope, please visit us at pilgrimcenterofhope.org slash donate. Until next time, remember, 
We are a pilgrim people. And on your journey, you are never alone in the communion of saints. Thank you for listening, and may God bless you.